Welcome to this overview of the Top Rate platform. Today I'll guide you through the main screens, features and functions that are available. And I won't spend too much time on each of them as they'll be covered in more specific in-depth videos. The purpose of this video is really designed to help you navigate the program and create an awareness of what Top Rate offers. So without further ado, let's log into Top Rate. The platform's accessed via any web browser, so as long as you can click a mouse, you'll find it very easy to use. First, let's look at the navigation. You'll see a small menu in the middle, but I wanna draw your attention to the top left menu. Clicking on it opens a navigation pane where you can access upcoming meetings that are already loaded into the system. You can view all meetings for a particular day by clicking on the day or open that day and choose one specific meeting. For past meetings, the results tab allows you to select a meeting from a recent day to view the results or use the custom calendar to go backwards in time and review a past meeting. Another way to navigate around is to use this custom calendar control here where I can just click on the calendar and then select any day that I want and it will take me into the race calendar with a list of meetings for that day. In the race calendar, you'll see a list of meetings on the left with the race numbers and times going across the page. The summary tab, it provides an overview of the day's meetings, including the weather and track condition, and they get updated as they're published by various race clubs. From the race calendar, you can click on any specific race to enter that race, or over here on the left, you can click on the meeting to access information at the meeting level. Several screens provide information at the meeting level, which run across the page here. Anywhere you see a small icon in top right with a plus sign indicates that you've got the ability to record a comment against that element, and those comments get saved to appear when they're relevant in the future. If you see an icon's change to look like this, it'll mean you have a comment entered and hovering over that comment will make it appear on the screen. The races screen I'm on here lists all the races at the meeting with their various conditions. And you can enter into that race by either clicking the race number at the top here, or by just going down the list and clicking on the race. To return to the meeting level information, I can use the option at the top. Or if I want to go back to all meetings on the day, I just click on the day. Next to the races tab, you'll see a track history feature. What this allows you to do is identify past meetings with similar rails and track conditions to the upcoming meeting. If I have a comment entered against that meeting, it'll appear here by hovering over the icon. By clicking on a meeting, you can go into that meeting to review the past results, including things like the race shape, video comments, and where the various winners and place getters were in the field. One thing I love is the ability to filter these results to show me just the winners for a particular day or the top three in each race. And what I typically do is go and review these details, including the video comments of winners and place getters to give me a feel for how the track played and help to identify any potential pattern for an upcoming meeting. The runners tab provides an alphabetical list of all horses that are entered to race at the meeting. And by clicking on a horse, you can see on the right hand side, the race or races that it's entered. The trainers page provides an alphabetical list of all trainers that have runners at the meeting with our rating for that trainer, as well as some performance stats here, strike rate and profit on turnover that you can customize via the options at the top right. These columns are sortable by clicking on the header and by clicking on a trainer's name, you'll see on the right hand side, a list of the races for the meeting that trainer has runners in with their runners highlighted in red text. The jockey page is structured exactly the same way with an alphabetical list. Uh, they're rating in various stats, which you can sort by clicking on that column and clicking on the jockey reveals a list of their rides on the right hand side. The size page shows you the average ratings of the top performers by that sire are broken down by age group, distance and ground conditions. I find them useful to predict when a horse might be able to improve its ratings, either by maturing as it gets older, getting to a longer distance, or perhaps striking a different track condition like wet ground. The gear changes page provides a list of all gear changes for the meeting, and the dual acceptors page provides a list of all horses that are accepted in more than one race, either at this meeting or at other meetings that are already loaded into the system. Now let's dive into some race level information. When you enter an individual race, there are various screens that you can access from the top menu here. The field view screen provides a list of runners in the race with some standard details that you're used to seeing, including a dual acceptors column here where if I click on that icon where it's present, it will show me the other races the horse has accepted. 
On the top right here is a toggle which allows me to show or hide scratched runners. By unclicking that option, you'll see that the scratch runners appear at the bottom here in pink, but by clicking it, those scratch runners will be hidden. The speed map page shows a speed map of the race using our default values, or you can customize these values within the form of each horse to create your own map. I start every race by reviewing this map and making my own adjustments, and I'll do a more detailed video on that in the future. You can see that each runner in the map has a price which you can customize using the market price or one of the other assessed prices, whether it be the top rate model price or your own assessed price. I often love looking at a race this way to give me a feel for where the main chances will be. And I've found numerous great bets just by identifying races where the key chances in that race map much better than others. The WPR chart provides a one page summary of the key ratings for runners in the race. On the right hand side, we have the last eight starts for each horse. And the columns in the middle here show a horse's top three ratings along with the distance and track condition that they are achieved in. I can customize the time period uh, that these peak ratings are shown by changing these radio buttons at the top. Another cool thing I can do is click on any of these columns to sort the ratings, which allows me to get a really good and fast overview of the rating talent in a race. I use this WPR assessment section if I want to assess and price a race using rating values and various adjustments. The assess screen allows you to see the top rate models assessed prices, or you can create your own assessments. You see the same WPR assessment section here as the price screen where you can create your own rated price and you have the ability to control the market percentage and the aggressiveness of your pricing spread from top to bottom, either on an individual race or you can set that up in your default settings. IAP here stands for Intuitive Assessed Price. Now I love this tool. What it does is allows you to create a good set of assessed prices that reflect your overall feel for a race and your judgment of the winning chances without using rating numbers. What you do is you can allocate a category to each horse from the drop down list based on how you assess its winning chances. And then you can fine tune that by moving it up and down so that the final assessment accurately reflects your overall feel for a race. The stats page allows me to see the same jockey, trainer and breeding stats from the meeting level, but for this individual race. The trainer and jockey stats have the added insight of showing you the combination between the two. So it allows you to see when a trainer and jockey have a very successful record together. And I've found numerous great winning bets by identifying when a trainer switches to a jockey that they have a terrific record with in the past. It's often a sign that a horse is expected to run really well. In the breeding stats, I can see rating stats for not only the horse's sire, but also the sire of its dam. So every horse is an individual and you should treat it as such, but these breeding insights have helped me many times to generate confidence that a horse has the potential to improve based on the conditions of the upcoming race and then I can bet accordingly. The subsequent form page allows me to look at the past runs of horses and see the number of horses that have come out of those races, how many starts they've had and their wins and places. If I use an example here in Shalaled, you can see two horses have come out of its last start. They've had two starts for a win and placing. By clicking on these stats, I can see the two horses that have already run, how they did in this particular race in question, and by clicking here, I can see their subsequent form as well. Looking at subsequent form for me is more than about wins and places, and I find ratings provide a much better insight. I love finding horses I like and then seeing that the ratings have held up out of their past runs, and it really gives me great bet betting confidence. It's something I've used with really good success in the past. Let's now look at the individual form for a horse. So here I am in a race at Rose Hill. You access the form for a horse by just clicking on its name in the list and it'll open a pop-up window with the form details for that horse. The top panel here provides a summary of the horse's rating profile, uh, assess prices and shows some standard career stats that you're used to seeing in other form guides. It also shows some jockey and trainer stats which you can customize the period for. On the right here, I can change the speed map value for the horse, which will be reflected in the speed map. And I can also change my rating assessment for the horse for an upcoming race, which will influence the WPR rated price. As I move into the detailed form of each horse, there's a wealth of valuable information. We've got the weight for age performance rating for each run, which is adjusted to the weight to be carried in this race. 
I can see the race shape, which shows me how the speed of that race was distributed in the early, middle and late stages relative to what's typical for a race of that standard. I can see where a horse was in the field at different stages in terms of lengths from the lead. I can view things like video comments, stewards comments, as well as my any of my own personal comments here on the right. My favorite feature is the ability to sort these columns in the form guide, which helps me to find angles, forecast performance, and identify promising bets that other punters might miss. By sorting, for example, in rating order, I can see a horse's peak ratings and the types of races they've been achieved in. I can sort by race shape. I can sort to group a horse's runs by individual track, track condition, and even distance all the while looking at things like the horse's performances and ratings to help identify useful insights that will help me to assess his performance for the upcoming race. Another favorite thing I like to do is sort a horse's form by barrier position, uh, which in conjunction with understanding the distance allows me to see where a horse might settle in the race based on where it's drawn today. Top rate not only allows you to do pre-race analysis, but also post-race analysis. By using the calendar control, I can go back to any past meeting and review the results, ratings, and various other information. I can see the race shape of each race, positions in running, and the ratings earned by each horse. I can enter my comments and they'll appear whenever those horses run again. I can add horses to my black book and apply a comment. One of the cool features for post-race analysis is that after a race is run and the ratings are finalized, I can see the results, but I can then also go back into the form of a race and I can see that latest run, the resulted race added to that horse's form. It really is the ultimate way for me to do my post-race analysis. What I do is it allows me to review my pre-race thoughts I had on individual horses, how that panned out in the race, and I can also review the horse's past form with the knowledge of what happened in this last race to see what I can learn about that horse going, going forward. It helps me to uncover clues and, and other insights that are gonna help me to make successful bets in the future. So I'm gonna wrap up the overview now. There's a lot more to explore and I'll cover that in some specific in-depth videos in the future. But as you can see, top rates, incredibly easy to use. It provides a stack of intelligence but it's also clear and concise and very easy to understand. You've got all of the information at your fingertips. And I know from my perspective, it helps me to be more efficient in studying the form, focus on the value added activities and allows me to adopt what I feel is overall a smarter approach to doing the form, which ultimately leads to more confident betting decisions. So until the next video, good punting.